Alright, hello there. We're going to be demonstrating today how to take uh, intro scans and a bite registration for a mandibular advancement splint. Um, today we're going to be using the tree shape trios system. It might change a little bit depending on what digital system, scanning system that you use. So in terms of how you would actually take full large um, scans. So obviously with the mandibular advancement splint we need to have the full arch of the teeth. Uh, ideally we want it to the very distal of the sevens or even uh, the mesial of the eights if they are present. So today we're just going to be demonstrating how we would do that. So firstly we're going to take uh, the scans uh, in the trio system. We start with the lower arch and then we go to the upper arch. So we'll do the lower arch first. I'm just going to grab a mirror. Okay, so let's get you open nice and wide, Callum, there. This one too. It's good to have the patient and just close a little bit again. Uh, close their mouth slightly when you're taking the upper arch buckle of the molars as that releases a slap in, the, in those um, soft tissues. It makes it a bit more comfortable for them. So those are the two upper arch, full arch scans. So now that they're done, now we move on to the bite registration. And we can do a bite registration scan. So that involves a little bit of impression material. So you want um, a bite registration material, um, just your typical sort of bite registration gun. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll, I'll just demonstrate the song gauge. So we'll just open this up. Now we've got the actual um, song gauge here. Uh, some people know of the George gauge as well. So generally speaking, uh, again, this is gonna really depend on uh, what you've been taught or who you've learned from but we're looking at how much the patient can protrude the jaw uh, to maximum protrusion and then back to centric relation. Uh, and then we're going, we're trying to figure out what percentage, how far forward we're gonna bring them from centric relation. So we're generally starting about 50%, but uh, you know, like everyone's gonna have different ways of doing it. So some people might be starting further forward, some people further back. Uh, I roughly start around 50%. So we have, Firstly, we've got to set up the little gauge thing to uh, have the lower incisor notch fit around the patient's lower incisors. So I'll just get the open up there again. So it's just simply at the front of the lower incisors there. So you would disengage this and just have it engage the teeth uh, nice and tight and then just tighten the bottom, the bottom ring. So now this part is done. You loosen up the top one. You've got the bite fork here, so now we need to insert this into the patient's mouth. But firstly, we can put it all together, okay, so that it's all one piece. Come around here. So I'll just get you open up again, Callum. And then, so we also have the vertical ramp, which we're going to leave um, loose for the time being. And we're just going to get Callum's open up there and just get you open. Wipe down together into that groove. Okay, so now he's biting into it. I'm just going to keep biting on that. So we can move the vertical adjustment ramp on the top, forwards and backwards. So we want to bring it as further forwards as possible so that it contacts the palatal aspect of the upper anteriors. We will tighten that up now so that it's nice and tight and resting on that well. So now you have the top part of the actual gauge unlocked and free and I'm going to get Callum to protrude your jaw with while you're biting on it. Can you bring your lower jaw, your mandible as far forward as possible? Yeah. So now we can look at the actual ruler on the gauge itself to see how much into the positive or how, or how far forwards he can achieve. So you're taking note of that, of that number. And then I get you to retrude your mandible as far back as you can go. Yep. Okay. And then can you go further as far forward as you can go again? And then back as far as you can go again. So you're just trying to get them to do it a couple of times so that we can get a consistent, maximum consistent um, uh, centric relation. And then once we've got those two, so just get open wide again. Once we have those two measurements, now we can. Uh, sort of figure out where about we want to start. So if, say 
say if Callum was plus five and negative five, so negative five centrifugation plus five maximum protrusion, then obviously zero is going to be about 50, is going to be 50%. Uh, so if that was the case, then we would find the zero or you would find what number you want to uh, achieve the starting um, position on and you would then lock it in that position. So then now that's determined where we want to start, then we would be putting it back into that position. So now that we've got the right position, now we want to take that as a record. Now the important thing is to make sure the patient's midline is straight. So you want to just, just uh, so keep riding and I'm just going to yeah, lift your lip there and then lift the lower lip. And then just make sure that it's as close as possible to that patient's midline as, 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 um, as you would have determined first. Now we want to take the record. So we do want to use some bite registration even for a scanning. We could scan it like this, but the patient sometimes will move their jaw as you're working around them. So it's nice to sort of get them more locked in that position. So there are two ways of doing this. The first way is we could take the gauge out, put bite registration along the whole fork, top and bottom, put it back in, get them to bite into it, let it set, take it out, and then we would have to actually use a scalpel to cut off the sides, put it back in, scan that, uh, scan, sorry, scan the sides, so the quadrant one, quadrant four molars, and then the other side as the second bite registration. Or we can actually do it a little bit more simpler. This way I know his midline is absolutely perfect, I've already checked it. So now we can actually use a bit of bite registration just on the anteriors. As, as, as that will still lock in the molar areas and actually there will be no bite registration in that area that will impede the scan. So I'm just gonna do that. I'll use a little bit just on the front here. So just a little bit of bite registration, uh, kind of impression material. Just, just mainly from the canines forward. So you do it on both sides. That takes, you know, depending on your bite, try and get as fast as possible, but maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds. Now once this is set, we can actually scan. So we can actually scan the bite registration and we don't have to send this record down to the lab. We can actually scan it straight in so that the lab will know exactly where to start. So now we will scan both sides. It's always good to do both sides so that the, the software can line it up and um, you can see if there's any discrepancies in the bite. So I'm gonna do the right side first. So just keep biting on that calum. I'm just gonna Squeeze my mirror down the side, and then we're going to use the scanner. Side. So the software should line it, line it all up for you, and, and um, notify you once it's lined up. So that's the first one. As I said, we did two, so I'll do the second one. So just keep biting, and I'll just scan the other side. Yeah. So that's the second one. Let's get out and white again, Callum. Thank you. Okay, so there you have it, that's how we do the bite registration for the records as well. So that's all lined up on the computer. Um, you can sort of assess it before the patient gets up to make sure that everything, the, the midline looks correct. Um, you have enough uh, vertical clearance at the molars. As you would know, uh, we would need roughly around three millimeters all around the arch. So if there isn't enough, uh, the lab can open it up for you. Otherwise, if you prefer to do it yourself so that you know 100% what, um, what you're gonna get at the end, then, then I uh, suggest doing the bite again, but changing the vertical ramp to open their vertical dimension up a little bit more. Um, okay, so I think that's all we needed to do. And uh, we've got all the records, so now we'll send this down to Somnomed to uh, begin construction of the Somnomed appliance. When using the SOM gauge to take your uh, protrusive bite record with the scanner, it's important to know that you can actually modify this to make the scanning a bit easier. So after you've taken the record of the patient, you can take it out of the gauge itself, and you can actually break off the front area of it after you've taken the registration. So this would typically have the registration material on there. You can actually snap that off quite easily um, with the front area gone, you're going to find, and then you push this, uh, put this back in the patient's mouth, you're going to find it quite easy to scan all around the uh, anterior to posterior regions, 
Um, so if you're having some difficulty uh, with your scanner, um, picking up the bite on the posterior regions, um, you, can, you can use this technique to give you more coverage um, from posterior to anterior to get a, a, a nice bite record um, in the protrusive setting. Now, when you are going to be filling out the Solomon lab form, there's a couple of things that you will need to fill out to ensure that the lab has all the proper information to uh, produce a high quality appliance. So first of all, obviously, uh, name, address, uh, contact details are important. The protrusive bite record is another important aspect of the lab form. So with the lab, that they like to know that we are getting a protrusive record of the patient's bite um, and whether it is even. So one of the questions here are, are the skeletal midlines on protrusion aligned? So it is important just to kind of act as a reminder that we want to have the midlines uh, aligned if possible unless there is a deviation through TMJ issues. So that just gives them a bit of information if you fill out that area. The song gauge measurements. So for the protrusive bite record, there's going to be your most protruded position, which is around centric relation. So that's the centric record here. So that gives you the, you know, what millimeter count was it on the song gauge? Was it negative five or so? Whatever that figure was. There's a song gauge maximum protrusion. So the maximum that they could achieve. So that's going to be uh, typically in a positives. You'll get the total range of movement of figure uh, out of those two numbers. And then when you put the start position on the lab form, that shows, you know, how much protrusion are we starting with? So they recommend here 60 to 80%. So around about that or earlier, uh, you know, 50% if you need it for people with, uh, with TMJ issues that find it too uncomfortable to come too far forwards to begin with. So that just gives the lab an idea of where we're starting. Then you want to obviously select what kind of appliance that you're going to be making. There are a few additional extras that you can add on depending on what uh, patient characteristics may be. So for example, lingual less, um, less acrylic on the lingual surface and palatal surface of the upper and lower devices. Very useful for patients who have large tongues or have you know, strong gag reflexes on the palatal gingiva, things like that. The elastic retention, so they can add little ball clasps to the um, devices to help orthodontic elastics, to help prevent mouth opening of jaw dropping during the sleep so we can keep it in a more closed position. The anterior breathing space, so typically just allows a little bit of a gap at the front area so that people who are mouth breathers uh, might find it easier to tolerate uh, having an airflow come through the mouth during their sleep. It's not feel so enclosed, so to speak. Um, additional lateral movement, that's another additional extra you can put on if you have a patient who is going for a uh, Solident Classic Flex Fusion device, uh, you may want to allow a little bit more lateral movement if they are going to be, if they are a lateral bruxer, so that's another consideration. Vertical adjustment ramp, yeah, look, you can add an adjustment ramp on the anterior which will help increase or decrease the vertical. Um, that's just if you have a patient where you're not too sure and you want to have the ability to change that as you see fit. Um, and then you have the Denti Track Compliance Recorder. So that's another additional um, thing you can add to a Sonodent device to track compliance. Typically, we don't do these unless it's prescribed by the sleep physician, but it is a nice handy feature uh, to have there. Some of these features you can get with the Avant, obviously. Um, you'll be able to see that on the lab form. Any additional instructions you want to put on the lab form, say distal wrapping of the, the, of the most distal uh, molars, or, as long as you fill out the form correctly um, and give as much information as possible, you'll find the lab will be able to get onto your device as soon as possible, get it into production, so 